Hey guys, it's Erin Wathen of Erin Wathen Wellness. I apologize. Yes. Sorry, that was an alarm. Yesterday, I was going to do a Facebook Live at 12.30. A client call ran late, and I didn't do it. My apologies. But it turns out today is World Mental Health Day. I did not know that. I'm not going to pretend that I did know that. I'm just not. Which has actually worked out pretty cool because a lot of mental health and weight are kind of intersected. And I'll get to that in a second. So some questions that came in yesterday. One, I'm going to answer these right off the bat because they're kind of the easier ones. Someone has a problem with pita chips. The problem isn't pita chips. The problem is why you're buying them if you know you can't stop eating them. So if you can't or it feels like you cannot stop eating pita chips, I wouldn't have them around the house until you can just have a couple. Because maybe you can right now, and that's totally cool. But what is going on with you that you are just mainlining the pita chips? I would just stay away from them. So secondly, someone else said, um, I learned I have a lot of mental weight to lose, not just physical weight, which happens all the time. Because often, say we have to lose 20 pounds, right? The physical act of losing weight doesn't take nearly as long as the mental work it takes to wrap your brain around your new body because you identified with someone that was 20 pounds heavier, but also, and this part always blows people's mind, being 20 pounds heavier served a purpose. There was something about it that worked for you. Now, when I was first told this, I got very defensive. <laughs> I didn't like this at all because I was like 15 pounds heavier than I am right now, which isn't a lot, but it was enough that it kept me not from doing what I'm doing right now. It kept me from not really going for the next step. It kept me from really putting myself out there, even though I hadn't worked in a long time. And I didn't even realize it was doing it. I didn't even realize that I was using it as an excuse. I just didn't feel like doing it. And whatever, I'm gonna go buy a pair of shoes instead, right? So it wasn't like with the connection between I wasn't really showing up for myself and the extra weight that I was able to not go to food emotionally. And then lastly, um, let's just tie back into mental health. So World Mental Health Day is today. So when we talk about mental health, oftentimes it's kind of different to people than physical health. Like they see a therapist differently than they see, and they, um, when we talk about going to the orthodontist, it's a different tone, it's a different perspective than going to see your therapist, right? Orthodontists or chiropractors or GPs are needed. Well, a therapist or a coach or a counselor, eh, when actually like your mental health is very important, and oftentimes with coaching, I spend a lot of time with clients. We work on their mental health, and then I get them to see a lot of what is getting in their way is their own thoughts. It isn't so much what they think it is. It isn't so much their boss, but their thoughts about their boss. It isn't so much the pita chips, because pita chips exist for a lot of people, but not everybody has a problem with pita chips. There's a difference. So when we talk about mental health day, a lot of it is removing the stigma. And when we have this just preconceived notion with mental health and how people should be, you know, if we have anxiety or if we have a problem with depression or whatever it is, oftentimes people go to food. They don't even realize it. So now, because I've done so much work with emotional eaters and food addiction, when I run across um, someone who is on the, the eating disorder spectrum or, you know, self diagnoses that they have um, various disordered eating, oftentimes it's a lot of unmet needs. Also, they're um, managing their mental health, meaning depression or anxiety with food. 
So they have an emotion, they don't like it, could be anxious, anxiety, they could be depressed about something, they go and eat instead of acknowledging the, fe the feeling, that kind of thing. Also, anxiety and depression are always exacerbated by a lot of the food choices we make. So all processed foods and sugar only make anxiety worse. <laughs> I know, right? So we might think we're having a bad day, you know, screw it, we're gonna go get some ice cream. You'll feel worse which is in the same way alcohol always makes us feel worse, right? When it might not seem short-term that chicken and broccoli is the way to go if you're having a really bad day, there's never any cliches of a girl that broke up with her boyfriend on the couch watching The Notebook in sweatpants eating, you know, kale, but it actually will make her feel better quicker than the tub of ice cream and the bag of candy. Doesn't make for a very funny greeting card though. So when we have mental health, we need to really work on the relationship it has with food and weight, and also just being aware that whenever we try to handle any mental health issues with food or drugs or alcohol, it's never going to end well because we're not addressing the issue and we're creating a new problem which is what happens with drugs and alcohol and food and think about it so if you have a feeling you don't like it could be anxiety you could be depressed you could be mad just pick whatever symptom you want and instead of addressing it you create a new problem the problem could be you get drunk you get high or it could be you just go get a bag of sugar whatever it is you create a new problem you numb out with it and various results can come from that. You gain weight, spike your blood sugar, you get drunk, you get high, whatever happens is a negative. It does not help the problem. It numbs you from it, distracts you from it, makes you do dumb things, but you still have the original issue. You still have the feelings you don't like and the feelings could be about a situation that is so far removed from the actual result over here that you aren't even anywhere near addressing because it's so uncomfortable. So when we talk about mental health, let's just take away all the perceptions and stigma and just look at like any other kind of health, right? There's no stigma about like when the foot doctor or whatever. <laughs> Have a really good Wednesday, you guys, and keep your FAQs coming and um, the other day I saw something when I was in Ohio about what's the best kind of candy to give your kids. All right, I'm just going to answer this question because people ask it to me all the time. Ideally, it's zero candy. I know, ideally a lot of things happen, right? But here's the thing. Ideally, we don't do a lot of things. Ideally, we uh, floss all the time, right? Ideally, we get nine hours of sleep. Ideally, I never curse. <laughs> but if you, for whatever reason, decide you want to give your kids something of the candy, which is your decision, as a parent, it is better, huge asterisk about what I'm next to say, to give them, say, a Snickers, assuming your kids can have nuts, then gummy savers, because, hear me out, the nuts and the protein, sorry, the protein and the fat in the Snickers will slow down the blood sugar absorption, number one. Number two, the high fructose corn syrup, the gummy stuff, is a lot more likely to um, make cavities and stick in the kid's teeth, right? So both are gross, both are unnecessary. There's so many other ways to celebrate Halloween. I could go on and on and on. But of the two evils, there you go. All right. Thanks, guys. And um, have a really good Wednesday and keep the questions coming. And uh, bye.